Finally, the San Francisco Silicon bubble about to pop. The San Francisco Bay Area is arguably one of the most beautiful places and pleasant places to live in the world, which is one of the reasons it's so freaking expensive. I should know I live here. We've continued run up on home prices here with seemingly no end in sight. In fact, the median home price for a home in San Francisco in 2019 was 1.299 million and Silicon Valley being 1.6 million. Now these are huge numbers which require huge incomes. Well, guess what? They have that too. The Bay Area considers itself so technologically advanced that they consider themselves part of the present and the future as tech will continue to change the world and have influence because of it. So what could possibly go wrong? Could it be the technology that drives tech companies from the tech hub of the world? Hi, I'm Miles and I happen to live here in the Bay Area and I'm a real estate investor with over 12 units here. And I started by house hacking and have built more than $1.5 million in equity in just four years in real estate. And today we're gonna to be talking about my predictions for what is gonna to happen to real estate here in the Bay Area, more specifically San Francisco and Silicon Valley. In this video, I'm really gonna to try to stay away from anything political as a whole and focus more on business mentality and employee mentality. So with that being said, let's tap in. Coronavirus has played a massive role in the shift. Not only has it shut down offices, but it's forced companies to adapt by converting meetings and all face-to-faces to online video. Forcing companies to have no office space was probably the push they needed to further develop the tools to make this feasible going into the future. California, which went into shelter in place on the 17th and San Francisco, starting about two weeks before that, we've essentially had two, two and a half months to practice going mobile. When we think about office space, we must think about massive cost to businesses bottom line. In San Francisco, the average lease cost for a new office in the financial district in 2018 was $81.25 a square foot. Let's put that into perspective. If you need just 10,000 square feet that would cost you about $812,500 a year, or about $67,708 a month. For perspective in Houston, that cost would be about $31 a square foot, or $25,800 a month. That difference in cost is about four to 10 employees in other markets, which could help you grow your business faster. In San Francisco alone, just in the month of March, we saw over 1 million square feet of office space come to market for sublease. Of course, we're gonna see numbers like this when a bunch of huge tech giants backed out of proposed leases like Google and employees aren't going to the office. But is this trend gonna continue? Now these are a ton of numbers, but let's just agree it's more expensive in these two areas. So cutting overhead would make sense for a company. Now let's not get into state taxes for businesses, which is a flat tax of around 8.8% .8 in California. So let's just agree that rent is probably one of the most expensive costs a business has in general. Another cost, which is the, probably the second biggest one, which is a premium in California specifically, like tech hubs in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, are incomes. They say the hardest thing an employer has to do is hire a good employee, and I second that. I, I've done it before and it's horrible. This is why there is such a fight to build the massive buildings, have the best food service, encourage recreational activities, having fun on site, and of course to pay its employees. I think one of the new perks will be an option to work from home, to choose whether you come in or not. In fact, some tech companies are already surveying employees on whether they want to come in or they want to elect to work from home. The Twitter CEO and Square CEO have already come out and stated you can work from home indefinitely, which is a major shift. Previously in tech, this was a no-no because of the belief that being around other humans spurs creativity. While I agree, this is true, especially knowing that feeling when you go into the office, you feel the energy from the other people, you're not in a dark home, garage conversion sort of thing. Giving employees options to choose something where they wanna work is enticing. Even offering a flex program where you can share a space but only one person comes in a few days a week then the other person comes in the other is another cost-saving method. And for those creators and essential workers who need to come in to feel that creativity, 
you can have a smaller space and have them fit. We very well could see an outside shift. So instead of sometimes right now, you probably get a caller from India or maybe the Philippines that they hire out or maybe a computer that sounds like a person. Instead, they could hire out in other states for other various positions, whether it's operations, HR, payroll, so many different avenues where they don't actually have to be in the office. I mean, if you're in California and you have a business, you have to be asking yourself at this point, why am I here? Elon Musk and even Joe Rogan have had threats to leave the Golden State. As businesses in California, you have to pay higher taxes in other business friendly states like Texas, which has no tax. As you've seen, we've had to pay higher rent. You have to pay your employers a higher income premium to incentivize them to come here and work. And the political structure in California tends to be very costly and time consuming. So again, I ask, is the weather and the climate worth it? I say yes, but not everybody sees it that way. During this time working from home, employers are focusing less on nine to five and more in a task-based results-driven model where as long as you complete your task and you produce results, we're cool with it. You do you. The old questions of productivity at home is slowly dying away. It's losing its steam. As we're being forced to work at home, we're starting to see productivity remain somewhat the same, if not increase. People are working a little bit longer. In fact, when you think about it, how many people in these areas come outside the city to work? Let me rephrase that. How many people drive in or spend one to two hours on the road? Those times can be spent working, thus getting more jobs done. The biggest issue has been working around the kids' schedules, but that also may not be an issue when kids go back to school or maybe their breaks are over and they're out of the house. While some of the old tech perks like on-site food, games, movies on-site can be just replaced from working with home. This is a copycat sector where you fight for talent and not offering this perk is something you can't afford to have. So my prediction for San Francisco and Silicon Valley tech companies is in the near term, companies are going to try and get out of their leases. Commercial leases are a little different from car leases and even house leases. Commercial leases usually run from three to 10 years. So getting out of it will take time and it will also be difficult and maybe expensive. But in that time, they can plan for a restructure to essentially plan for it. A recent study from Blackburn stated that five to 15% of tenants were rethinking their lease options and just a small percentage of them not renewing will have huge impacts on commercial real estate market. As this begins to stabilize or fall even a little bit, it's gonna affect workers and tech hubs. It's gonna affect housing and tech hubs. It's gonna just affect a whole slew of items that we can't even see yet. So I can't tell you what's gonna happen in real estate and I really hope it doesn't go down because in my industry, in the real estate industry, we don't wanna see that and I hope it's not really a prediction. However, this is something that we have to look at and prepare for, especially here in the Bay Area. Now, I do want to hear your thoughts on everything that I've been saying, whether you agree, disagree, hate me, want to stab me. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I'd love to hear your comments. Like and subscribe below, and I'll see you next time.